Welcome to my review of 2022's Everything Everywhere All at Once Review and Thoughts. Everything Everywhere All at Once, or for short, EOW. Happy slightly belated International Women's Day, and we are celebrating Women's History Month by examining this movie. So I'm going to start by telling you, this was a movie that I absolutely loved. This video will have some jokes, and I will get into some serious topics. Now, I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. Also, if you're only interested in the review or thought sections, you know, yeah, you don't have to watch the entire video. And you can see the length of the individual sections in the description box. So, I start this video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. As soon as I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the very ending. So... The rating for this is R. This, uh, yeah, and yeah, I will probably swear in this video. Now, the, let's see. I'm going to keep the, oh, right, right, yes. I just got done watching the, the movie itself, like, very few minutes pass between the credits, you know, finishing rolling and the me hitting record. And let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I did want to watch this in theaters, but it wasn't in a theater near me. So I, you know, but now it's on my library's streaming site. So, yeah. So, I'm going to use the original IMDb plot synopsis. This movie is about a woman trying to do her taxes. I will be... I'll, I'll try to spoil absolutely nothing in the review itself, which will be difficult. But, yeah, I'll just I'll keep things very vague. Before I start talking details about the technical aspects... I want to say the people are very talented. There's a lot of skill and enthusiasm on display here. And let's see. Yeah, so the writing. Um, yeah, I have unmedicated ADHD. Tried medicine once, made it worse. So I can relate to parts of this movie that I can imagine people who don't have ADHD yeah, may not be able to. This is the first feature film by the duo I watch, but I would very much like to watch their other work. Any criticisms I make is not meant as criticism of Chinese or other Asian people and culture. I'm not saying that their cinema is inferior. In fact, Asian cinema is some of the best of the world. And, you know, the movies that I put behind, I realize most of them are Western I don't own that many Asian movies that really make sense for me to be comparing this to. I am not trying to imply that this movie is just, you know, Kill Bill or Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind or Matrix. Again, this, the, it, it, there are some elements that are similar, but this is definitely not just a rip-off, like some people are apparently, yeah. And, yeah, based on the things that this movie is doing and how, you know, this... I was hoping that I would love it, but I wasn't entirely sure. Apparently some people really hate it. But, yeah, I, I really, really loved the... the yeah. And... Yeah, so there are a number of plot twists in this. Um, I, I wouldn't say there are too many, and, and I don't think any of them are bad, though I appreciate that some people disagree with me on both of those. There definitely aren't too few. I don't think they're too easy to figure out for the viewer, and this is not one of those movies that falls apart once you learn certain twists. Now... Yeah, I, I, it's not really, there are twists, 
it's not... I'm, I'm not sure I would say that it's one of those movies that just, like, okay, if you love twists, you're going to love the way this movie, you know, the, the, the twists and the number of twists and how... It, I wouldn't watch it for the twists. So, moving on to the direction. So, this was both written and directed by The Daniels, or Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert. And... The, the yeah, let's see. I think yeah, that is. I'm gonna leave that one to the spoiler section. I don't understand how some people say that this movie is boring. This is entirely too fascinating to be boring. Now the d direct d writer and director duo started out making music videos, and you can tell in the very best way. They have a real sense of creativity, and I was honestly, based on some of the reviews I read, I was a little worried that the film feels like you're trapped in a music video for like a lot of it. It really doesn't. Like it, I I understand why some people might feel that way, but. I, uh, yeah, I, I didn't at all. I would also recommend their short, I'm Nostalgic, which is free here on YouTube, and like this movie, shows their ability to connect with the audience on a very human level while being somewhat silly. That one is not as visually creative as this and their music videos and such, but it has some silliness, but it also, you know, you can really connect. Yeah. Across their music videos, we see one person in the middle of a party who's sad, lonely, is the focus rather than the happy people. People are preoccupied with real-life problems, even when they try to escape them. Normal people in unusual circumstances and uphill battles. Honestly, all of the shorts and music videos they've made that are free here on YouTube are worth watching at least once. Like, some of the, you know, some of the music, not really my kind of thing, but I still really enjoyed the video. And let's see that. Yeah, so I wanted to quote IMDb trivia. Guillermo del Toro, Alfonso Cuaron, and Alejandro G. Inaritu praised the film, calling it this generation's train spotting. When I see a film like Everything All at Once, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and I realize how much it is impacting the generation of my kids and how they embrace it in the same way that I embraced The Graduate when I was their age. I love that, said Del Toro. I love that people can be so passionate about a movie that reflects something to them, even if the older generation don't get it. Th that movie has become a landmark for one generation to be able to say forever, that must was my voice at the time. I'll follow. So, added Quaron, I think... It happened the same way in the 90s with the films of Tarantino or The Train Spotting, where it felt like there was a huge new injection of energy into cinema, and it's exactly the same thing for this generation with everything everywhere. I absolutely agree, and I, th I feel like they're trying to avoid saying that they themselves aren't sure they get it. I 100, I really respect. I love when someone can say, I'm not sure I get it, but some people I trust really do and I love that. And yeah, I can imagine, you know, I'm in my 30s. I I probably, I'm not, I, th I think, yeah, I, I, maybe not, if you try to show it to someone much older than 30, they might just not, you know, it, it might not connect with them the way that it did with me and have with a lot of other millennials. And I have some critic quotes, so let's see. Um, okay, that is... Let's see. Like the first word in its title, this film, this film feels like everything. While watching it, I thought Stephanie Su was everything too, but then again, so was Michelle Yeoh and Jamie Lee Curtis. I'm just going to make sure to put that there. We go. And the fact that James Hong was still getting it done at age 93 was wonderful, absolutely. And 
I also loved how both mother and daughter, troubled as they were with their upbringing, each found comfort in a nice and patient, in a kind and patient partner. And Tally Medell's character was a nice touch. The film threatens to go off the rails with its madcap. Uh, yeah, I guess no. I don't want to spoil that, but yeah, the the. Um, let's see. Yeah, the film is incredibly powerful. It was impressive that it managed to be so entertaining along the way. Takes us on a wild ride. It's one that rewards a rewatch too, as it's full of little details and references. Just a great film. Lots of fun and from the heart. And let's see. Profoundly deep, genuinely moving, utterly hilarious, highly imaginative, and a visual feast. Haven't laughed this hard, cried this much, or thought so deeply about any film in 2022, much less all in the same viewing. This was indeed everything, everywhere, all at once. Felt like I was seeing the inside of my own mind on screen. I have trouble turning off my brain. Anxieties, worries, mundane to-dos, even positive things sometimes feel like they're swirling around in a chaotic funnel cloud, and I would like nothing more than to sit in physical and mental silence. This movie felt like the inside of my head. In a world of non-stop, 24-7 news, most of it bad, how is a person like me who has trouble filtering out things that affect me directly from all the other things that are just out there happening in general and over which I have no control supposed to cope? Let's see, and... One answer is to decide that nothing matters anyway and give up caring, but that means deciding that my wife doesn't matter, that my kids don't matter, and that art and nature and things that bring joy to my life don't matter. And other ways to decide that some things, okay, maybe most things, don't matter, but that there are things that do, and those are the things that make it all worth it. I get to decide what those things are. The first approach is nihilistic, the second approach is empowering. The film explores both approaches and I was a sobbing mess at the end. I will say there were times I was a bit exhausted by this movie. It throws a lot on the screen and at the viewer, and occasionally it can't keep up with its ambitions, but this was mostly a home run. Michelle Yeoh does terrific work in this, but the MVP is K. Oi Kwan, short round from the Indiana Jones movies. Let's see see and oh right yeah I do gotta quote one really negative review so this person gave it a 1 out of 10 and said tried watching this movie but within five minutes it was pushing the LGBTQ plus agenda I am done with this crap yes how dare they advocate for being treated with humanity after all they what they do with their genitalia it hurts no one but it's different from straight cis people I suppose I should just briefly say I try not to cry during movies since I appear on camera so soon after and I believe it would be distracting for people if they could tell that I had recently cried. Not that there's anything wrong with crying, it's healthy. But yeah, that is the, the choice I've made. Some movies make it extremely difficult not to cry and this was one of them. Now, let's see... Um, hmm. More or less a microcosm of your average day online, scrolling through feeds of random information, seeing contextless fragments of people's lives, and generally feeling overwhelmed by the limitless drama unfolding at any given time all over the world. Zany, funny, and incredibly creative movie. Now, let's see. The first six minutes of the mo this movie are incredibly entertaining, some of the most creative cinema in a while. Let's see. Um... Once the concept is fully explored, the emotional heart of the movie... Yeah, so this... Yeah. This, uh, I, I don't quite agree. But some people have felt this way. The emotional heart of the movie takes too long to come together, despite... Uh, let's see what it is. I was quite exhausted by the end of it. Wished we could have gotten to the finish line 20 minutes earlier. And, yeah, I, I respect that opinion. And for sure, like, I would definitely say that this is a movie... Try not to have... This movie is going to require your full attention. You're going to... You, you know, you can follow it in, in a single sitting. They, they are... They, they have this really great approach that means that you can follow it despite 
it's seeming like like if you if someone tried to explain to you what this movie is about uh, you know make, make sure you stop them if you have any desire to watch this is definitely a movie you should go into with no spoilers but yeah it would sound really confusing but the way that the movie handles it they manage to keep it from being confusing which i greatly appreciate and the uh, it yeah make sure that the day you watch it try not to have anything like that really requires a lot of attention earlier like do not watch this movie you know right after you did uh and you know a final exam at school or something just you know to make sure that that your mind you know i watched this like right after i got out of bed you know i i yeah got out of bed had breakfast put this movie on so there's nothing there's not anything swimming around my head even though that tends to start very early in the day you know and that's how to watch this movie and yeah uh the movie you know some critics have noted the movie is in part about generational trauma and the the trials of immigrants to america probably other countries as well but yeah i think i'm gonna put that in one of the yeah i'll put that here okay so the opening does a really great job of just immediately like this is the kind of movie some people are gonna zone out in the first five minutes and honestly if that happens the movie is probably just moving too fast for you and that's fine that's that doesn't mean that you're wrong or the movie's wrong or, you know not all you know essentially no movie is made for everyone but this is definitely a movie that is very much yeah but yeah the the opening of the movie like immediately sets up some of the relationships that are super important for the rest of the movie and just yeah i i very i really really admire and and honestly i feel like i saw some people say oh it's just so random it doesn't have any focus it feels like it was like they just made stuff up while they were honestly okay you're entitled to your opinion and if you think this movie is the worst movie ever made you're entitled to believe that i'm not telling you that you're wrong but the people who say that this movie was just made up like they just put the camera on the cast and said i don't know just do whatever you have no idea how like there are movies where that's what they do you know the the I don't watch a lot of comedies these I, I don't watch a lot of recent comedies but I do know that like the um certainly the first probably both of the neighbors movies the the um, it's, uh hold on is there more than one the 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 ones with the um uh I'll I'll find it real quick and have the yeah there there are multiple movies called neighbors so it's the ones starring Seth Rogen Rose Byrne and Zac Efron those movies have a lot of improvisation this movie i mean maybe there's some but this movie like the focus is there this this really has like you're entitled to not like the movie but please try to not spread absolute nonsense it's ridiculous to think that this movie was just made up and then they just edited together the stuff they thought there were no the there is a very very clear focus here like even you know what if there is some improvisation in this movie i would definitely say they had some very clear guidelines which i would say you know the first neighbors it kind of felt like they did like anything goes like they could say anything and if it's funny enough it'll get it'll go into the final cut and the yeah i do i respect the first one but i love the second one now, I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits what came before. I think the ending is basically perfect, though, you know, the, yeah, I already quoted a critic who said, a user review who said that they didn't quite like the ending, and that's, yeah, some people will not like the ending. And, yeah, the there's no Deus Ex Machina or other convenient writing. And... Yeah, no, no post credit scene or or something like that. And 
Honestly, I feel like a number of the people who really don't like this movie just are not open to, like, the emotion. Like, for sure. For some people, it just won't work, even if you are. But, like, if you go into this movie and you, you aren't open to what it's throwing your way, you're, you're sabotaging your viewing experience. That's, that's all I'm going to say. You, you really do need to, you know, and there's... Like there's there's stuff in this, you know. I'm 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 sure I don't know enough about Chinese culture to have appreciated all of it, and and certainly you know uh, yes yes it is worth saying, in the in the spoiler free section. Try not to be too judgmental of Chinese culture because they they do have they can come across as cold towards uh, their family members and they actually you know the the movie does give you a, a brief primer because very early on the the I don't think I want to give away exactly but I just want to say there's a there's a there's a white character who you know is like so what you're saying is if a Chinese person, you know, says something that sounds very rude. It, yeah, the the example they give is, you know, the, the you know, the Chinese person might say to their own daughter, "You're getting fat." That doesn't mean that they hate you. It means that they care. That's how they express that they care. You know, so it, it was smart of them to put that there. You know, very very early in the movie to to kind of put you in that, you know, so that you know. I suppose this is a, a decent time to th say, um, I, th yeah, I, I'm struggling to find, but I, one of the Daniels, Daniel Kwan, is uh, Chinese. I'm not 100% certain if Daniel Shiner, uh, maybe, let's see, does Wikipedia maybe say? So if I say Daniel, Shine, really? There we go. Um, let's see. The, uh, let's see. Oh, do they not have? Okay, apparently. Let's see, Shiner. Yeah, they they were born in America. But Quan has Chinese heritage. I'm not 100% certain if if Shinert, um, I, yeah. If I had to get certainly, he understands the culture. There's, you know, there's they they really they they they're really great at working together. And yeah, the the um, I could definitely understand. Like some people, some people seem to think that the viewer should be in combat with the movie. And like, if the movie says something that you don't like, you go, "No, because this is America, and I am a man, and you don't have to tell me what to think." When really, it's just no, no, no. The movie's just. The movie's giving you a, a bit of a what's what's the word skeleton key? Like this is how you're supposed to understand what you're about to see. It's not that you don't. It's not that you're allowed. You're, you're you know. It's not about whether or not you think it's okay. It's just this is and and as far as I understand, that is you know that is part of Chinese culture. They they. It's not that they think. You know, if yeah, if they say you are getting fat, that doesn't mean it's they're not. It's it's not saying there is something wrong with you. It's you know, it's basically saying I care about what you do about the the yeah, you know. Now that brings us to the character. So. Before I get into details, and again, you know, very, I'm, I'm not going to spoil, but 
I want to say this is a movie with a tremendous amount of emotional intelligence and just these are the kinds this is the kind of stuff we need in movies today you know if you know f for the conservatives who say ah i miss the way movies used to be so go watch the ones that you like don't try to ruin it for everyone else we're finally at a point where we can like movies can dare to just be honest and be pure and not try to you know there are things in this movie that like I'm so glad that this was made by people who don't feel the need to get cynical and ironic and make a joke every time we have a big emotional moment. You know, I love the MCU, I do. But I I'm it's so frustrating that they feel the need to always like they and they didn't even they didn't they didn't before the first Avengers, you know, and anyway, I really appreciate that this movie it's just honest, and I think that's something that some people just couldn't handle. They felt like, no, that's not, you know, they, they feel, if you're, if you're told, I, I grew up being told a very specific, narrow version of masculinity, and, you know, years ago, when I first started to see that version of masculinity challenged, yeah, some of the time, I was frustrated, because I was like, if I had been told that was okay years ago, I would have been so much happier. And now you're telling me that it's okay. I didn't have to be miserable all that time. And and that can be very frustrating. But you got to work through that. you got to get to a place. Because you're never going to be happy if you stay in that spot that just, you know, we're told a lot of crap growing up. And when you come of age and you are, you know, allowed to make your own choices, you gotta try to make choices that are more positive instead of all the, the negative crap we were taught. So, getting into the characters. Michelle Yeoh plays Evelyn Wong, and, yeah, one of the critics said, the sort of movie Michelle Yeoh, and I would add, it is also the one we need right now. She is unbelievably good like i i really hope that we get to you know it, uh, you know she was she was in this and she was in shang chi you know she was like when the, the um you know the there have been parts of her career where she was a really really big deal and i hope that this gets to be another one of those, you know, in the, yeah, in 2000, she was, you know, in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, which helped people really appreciate, holy crap, she's, she's unbelievably talented. In the, let's see, ah, uh, which one was it? In, like, the 80s and 90s, she did some Chinese movies where the, you know, yeah, other Chinese movies. Uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is also Chinese. But, but yeah, you know, the, the, yeah, and, and, you know, some since Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, let's see, there were, yeah, she got a couple of other roles, you know, because she, in that movie, people could tell, holy crap, she's incredibly talented. How did we, how did we sleep her, sleep on her for so long? You know, but then, like, yeah, more recently, you know, there's been some really great stuff, but some of the time she doesn't really get enough credit, and, yeah, you know, let's see, there are a couple of, holy crap, there's, there's 11 upcoming projects for her, so yeah, I, I think that, Holy crap, she's going to be in Avatar. She wasn't in Avatar before, was she? No, but yeah, she's listed as being in Avatar 3. Holy crap. Yeah, you know, James Cameron is good at spotting talent. There are some things that... He has some weak spots. He's good at spotting talent. Uh, let's see... Yeah, you know, I, I, I really hope she, she gets more. She is, she is incredible. And... Yeah, uh, Stephanie Sue plays Joy Wong, her daughter. Jamie Lee Curtis plays IRS. Um, are they just called agents? I don't know very much about the IRS, but yeah. She plays Deidre Bobiedra. 
and uh, yeah, she, you know, she is she is proudly very very like she the 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 amount of you know she she really goes deep digs deep and finds you know and yeah it, you may not have met one but you know of them you know and just Jamie Lee Curtis like holy crap I don't think I have seen anything of hers where she wasn't amazing like True Lies does not give her, you know, in, in, like, there's some there, sure, but she makes that character so much more than what it is on paper, you know, they, there's apparently, there's like, um, there's, um, uh, there's a show being made, of the, the, I believe the pilot just dropped, and I'm telling you right now, I do not believe that that movie would have been so big and been made into a show and you know people have been talking about can we can we please get a sequel for literally decades now you know i've i've heard so many people talk about sequels for so long and been like i mean you could bring the daughter back and you know because like i don't know maybe maybe the two leads are a little bit up in years to be doing the kind of fighting that they did in that movie but yeah if not for Jamie Lee Curtis, that movie would not have been as as big. Like it's, she's she's so unbelievably good. She's good in everything. I'm I'm so glad that she also like, you know, you this and the the new Halloween trilogy, the H40 trilogy, starting in starting with the 2018 Halloween. You know, like there's a reason. Like 40 years later, she reprises the role. She also did it 20 years later, but. That movie is not great, but yeah, the the I I I'm so glad she's still in movies. I really really hope that, like, as as long as she wants to, I I think she should keep going because it's forty years. She's been working for forty years as an actress. You know, she she I, I guess she's like sixty by now. Just so amazing. Like she just. The, the the energy she has in this, like, you can tell she still has a passion for it. And it's no wonder, you know, she read the script, and she's like, holy crap, this is amazing. So, yeah. Ke Wei Kwan plays Waymond Wang, the husband of Evelyn. James Hong plays Gong Gong, the father of Evelyn. Let's see. Yeah, and Tally Medell plays Becky, and I... Um, do I want to give that away? Um, what I will say is she has a an incredibly sweet relationship with another character, and yeah, she is she's lesbian and just like honestly, yeah, you must really be deep down the rabbit hole of you. You must. I hate the term red pilling because they're they took it from two trans women who made a movie about transitioning that was so stealth that nobody cis got it but like yeah you know they, they you you really really have to hate gay people to not think that the relationship between Becky and her partner is incredibly sweet and just just yeah this is the kind of movie where if you don't if this is the first time you if, if that you even become aware that it's possible for women to be with other women instead of with men this movie is really going to give you an idea of how sweet that can be how much hostility there can be towards it but also how much acceptance there is in you know in the right places jenny slate plays debbie the dog mom Unfortunately, the the you know her the 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 character is arguably a an anti-Semitic stereotype, but I think it's very important to note they didn't realize that when they made the movie. This is not you know oh look at how ridiculous Jewish people are. It actually like. Let's see, there, there was a, um, oh, did I not copy that in? 
Oh, that's right. I copied it into. It, yeah, it, I swear this won't take long to find, but I have the exact thing here. Uh, here we go. Yeah. So. The, the, let's see, um, yeah, the character received some criticism for playing into Jewish stereotypes. According to the film directors, it was, like, they didn't realize that that was, you know, that that, that was what it was. They actually, it was actually just supposed to be a reference to white people, and the, the way that some Chinese people saw white people, you know, and, um, yeah, um, it's, it's, I, it sucks that it is in there, but they try, they actually, they did cut some of the material. They, they couldn't have cut more of it. I, like, literally, I defy you. Explain to me how you could possibly cut what little there is without it legitimate being like a hole. Like, you'd be like, what? How did that? But they were right. First they were here, and now they're here? How did that happen? They legitimately had to leave that in. And just, yeah. You know, and, and the, the, yeah. Yeah. It, it legitimately, it doesn't come from a place of hatred. They, 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 you know, in, that's the thing when you're making a movie that is, you know, a lot of the movie is in English, so, and, and, you know, it was released, the, the, you know, a, a number of the, some of the cast are known, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis, I, I don't know if she, she might also have a fan base in China, but, you know, yeah, it's, uh, Americans know her, certainly. You know, she's a, you know, yeah, her, her career has had its ups and downs, I'm, I'm sure. But the, you know, you know her, you, the, you know, so the, the, you know, because of that, they, they didn't, in, you know, the movie is definitely in part made for Chinese audiences. And I really, I, I love the, I, th I think we, we have to. We have to stop trying to make every movie, every single piece of pop culture accessible to everyone. It really, it can really dilute movies. Some movies get away with it really well, but some movies end up really diluted. You know, I, I personally did really love Shang-Chi, but uh, I, I guess I'll try. Um, the... Um, Yes. I'm going to try. I'm not going to try. I'm going to I would I would completely screw it up. Um there is a YouTuber. She has made a a Chinese YouTuber who makes videos in American. She has made videos talking about everything culturally right and wrong with Let's see. She yeah, she made one about the the, the animated Mulan. I think she also did one about the, um, let's see, oh, wow, I completely, forgot. yeah, yeah, she did the, she did the, the second Mulan, the second animated Mulan, uh, the, that's right, yeah, she, yeah, she started her career as everything culturally wrong with Mulan 2020, and how they could have been fixed, and she made a video talking about the movie Shang-Chi, and she said, you know, it's 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 a nothing movie. It it's you know it's it's too diluted to be appealing to Chinese people, and uh, you know it's it's important to listen to because that is part of you know like the character of Shang Chi would not exist at all like even in comic book form if not for Chinese cinema. So it is important, to, but but yeah. Let's see the uh, I'm not gonna. Claim that I knew exactly. There are a bunch of people in the cast that I cannot really place. So I guess I. Well, I guess that is one way to. Yeah. Okay. 
So the yeah. IMDb trivia. Language is very important to the story. Evelyn speaks to her father in Cantonese, but she speaks to Wayman in Mandarin, showing cultural differences in their upbringing. Mother-daughter relationships relationship is also language-shaped. Evelyn speaks to Joy in Mandarin and English, while Joy answers back in English and bad Chinese. Neither one finds the words to express their ideas clearly to the other, keeping them divided. Even the language barrier with the Internal Revenue Service makes everything harder. Now, the this is a movie where, like, a number of the actors have to play very different versions of themselves, and they all do such amazing work. Like, this really... If you, if you too, have been sleeping on Michelle Yeoh, maybe also Jamie Lee Curtis, watch this. This is going to really show you, holy crap, these women can act. Like, it's, it's unreal how talented they are. It's just absolutely astounding. Now, the dialogue... This is one of those movies where it's very important that you have subtitles on. The, the, I don't know, I guess if you're extremely good at speaking Cantonese, Mandarin, and English, maybe you can go without, but... For the rest of us, you kind of do need, and yeah, um, I've never had a problem reading subtitles. Like I grew up reading subtitles. I've I've always had subtitles on stuff I watched. So I, you know, but I know some people don't like subtitles. Honestly, I think that might also be because some of the things I read in negative reviews, like. I don't think they were good at putting words to what they didn't like because what they wrote just doesn't make any sense. And I, th yeah, you know, some people are worried that they'll sound racist if they criticize a movie for not being in their native language, yeah, for not being in English and them needing to use subtitles. And I'm, I don't, I'm not the right person to, to, you know, adjudicate that decision, but you definitely do need to be comfortable with the subtitles, otherwise the movie really is going to... But but yeah, the, the dialogue is really, really good. Like, you can tell, like, the... the yeah, ev everyone really has their own voice, you know the way that they the, the way that their lines are both written and delivered is very unique to them and that's actually one of the ways that the movie keeps some things clear that otherwise you would completely you you wouldn't be able to keep up and that brings us to the movie's cinematography which was handled by Larkin Seipel, and he has 65 completed credits as cinematographer and two upcoming. And yeah, some some of this is like shorts, music videos, and such. I'm not sure I'm familiar with his other one. Oh, he was the cinematographer on Childish Gambino's "This Is America." Do I need to say more? That That is, yeah, that helps show how unbelievably talented. He was also the cinematographer on Swiss Army Man, also a movie by the, um, the, the duo, and, yeah. Oh, and Cop Car. Yeah, he's, he's been working with the, the duo on other stuff. He, he's, he DP'd their short, interesting ball. Which is also just like holy crap, the creativity there. Um, I I can't. I don't know the words to express how, like, it takes a lot of guts to tell an actress, no, I want you to say the words, my crotch is dead. And I want you to feel it. I don't want you to be giggling through it. And it freaking works. Like, I, I can't... 
When I say that to you, if you haven't watched it, you're like, no, no way that works. No way that works. There's no way to make that dramatic. It has to be. Of course you're going to laugh at it. And and somehow they made it work. I, I can't. They're, they're so good at taking something that should be silly and making it work. And the, yeah, honestly, the cinematography is a big part of why you can follow the movie despite the the wild concept and how like by all account like oh if i only explain it if like you'd basically you'd have to see clips of the movie in order to fully like otherwise you're just not gonna believe it, and i don't blame you there's no way that a movie with this kind of concept could be easy or not not easy but could keep focus and not be super confusing. That brings us to the editing, which is also a really big part of why you can follow it. The editor was Paul Rogers. He has 15 completed credits, one upcoming, and yeah, he's also done music videos and shorts, and that again, like, if when I just tell you the editor... Let's see, he has th uh, four music videos, and holy crap, that's a lot of shorts. Okay, one, two, oh, never mind, it wasn't that many. Four shorts. He does also have some, uh, as far as I can tell, these are movies, but and, and episodes of, of TV. But, yeah, um, it was definitely necessary for it to be a someone who who knows how to edit music videos because there is you know it's not it's not the kind of mindless noise of of some music videos it is the the way that it can keep your focus despite a lot of visual input and Let's see the uh, uh yeah there we go that brings us to so yeah um the budget the movie's budget is commonly estimated to be twenty five million dollars which is a shockingly low amount however this estimate is still too high during an interview at SBIFF Cinema Society producer Jonathan Wang revealed that the entire movie was shot with a budget of only fourteen point three million dollars for comparison's sake that's right around one fourteenth the estimated budget of Multiverse of Madness which came out the same year and share some similarities the directors like to joke that they made the movie for the cost of a Marvel's catering budget, which is very funny. And, yeah, um, the, um, let's see. Okay, so, so the worldwide gross is over $106 million, and it's no wonder, because it really, like, this is a movie that you can watch multiple times and still get a lot out of, and it is like I realize some people really hated it and and told people don't go watch it but a lot of people loved it and told everyone they know to go watch it so yeah it's it's absolutely it is no wonder that it it made that much now this was shot let's see yeah so part uh, let's see yeah um, California is the yeah yeah and they get a lot out of like i i um they they did some really the, the yeah the the um um they get a a a lot out of the the locations and I, I realize, you know, some, some people felt that too much of the movie was in very specific locations. I didn't feel like I'm, I usually love when you have a lot of very different locations, but I'm, I'm really glad that this one made the, you know, part of it is definitely budget, you know, and yeah, I, I think it was a really, really 
great choice. The, the, um, yeah, sometimes great choice. You know, yeah, great choices come out of limitations. You know, they could have really cut down on all the stuff they wanted to do, or they could choose to, you know, have very specific settings where they have control over a number of aspects of production, and they made the latter choice, and I'm really, really glad. Now, according to IMDb Trivia, Daniel Kwan based the opening shot of Evelyn Wang on the cluttered lives of his many aunts and uncles. The Chinese phone book, weird glowing butterfly display are lifted directly from his childhood. I've had some Asian American audience members come up to me and said that this apartment triggers them, he stated. Which, yeah, like, if... Yeah. Right, right. Another thing, um, I saw some people say that they didn't think the characters were likable. You really need to work on your empathy. Um, yeah. That's... And, and the... Yeah. The, the, um... Let's see... Right. The music is handled by Son Lux. And according to Wikipedia, oh, actually, I will just very briefly, let's see, so the, um, uh, okay, oh, they're a trio, geographically and culturally diverse band, Rafik Batia, Yin Chang, Ryan Lott, each bringing their unique sonic approach to creating other an otherworldly whole. Yeah, they were the exact right choice for, for here. And wow. Okay. Um, this is only the second movie that they have um, composed for. They also composed for a... Okay, this it says short, but with that name, it has to be like a... That's got to be a music video. Um, Rolls Royce Younger, but yeah, they also they also composed for Mean Dreams. They're featured on the soundtrack of forty seven movies, but yeah, the the um, I I really really hope that they, uh, although maybe they, they there are there is probably the, the they're so specific and unique. It's don't worry, I won't say most unique. I know that. The grammar nerds hate that. Um, yeah, they're probably they're almost too specific to to have a wide. But I'll just say I'm really really glad that they were chosen for this because they did an amazing job. And according to Wikipedia, they took two to three years to compose the score, which includes more than 100 musical cues. Yeah, that. I wasn't counting, but I'm sure, yeah, that makes sense. The soundtrack album consists of 49 tracks, runs for more than two hours, features several prominent musicians, including Mitski, David Byrne, a flute playing Andre 3000, Randy Newman, Moses Sumney, Ajnal Pivnik, and Y Music, two songs, This Is A Life featuring Mitski and Byrne, and Fence featuring Sumney, released the singles in 2022. The album was released... To positive critical response, the, the film features several instances, both in audio and dialogue, of the 2009 days song. Okay, that's the nine days song from the year 2000, not 2009. Absolutely, story of a girl. When Daniels contacted nine days vocalist John Hampton about using the song, Hampson, Hampson enthusiastically agreed to record three alternate versions of the song for use in the film. Yeah, I. Yeah, music is also one of the ways that the movie, movie makes it very clear, may, may, it focuses you on, yeah. And, yeah, the, the sound design is amazing. Like, some of the things just, there are some extremely unusual things in this movie that need to have, like very specific audio cues or it's just not gonna work and they did an amazing job there so the pacing you know some people felt that the last chunk of the movie was too slow some people felt that the first chunk was moving too fast too much was happening I don't know I, honestly like this was a movie 
like with, you know, I recently did a video on The Night House, like a, a week ago, I guess. Both of these, I just 100%, I, I understood exactly what they were going. I was in tune with the movies throughout. Like, nothing felt like, oh, wow, that was, that was wrong. Just, yeah. And I, you know, I acknowledge not everybody will feel that way, and that's not something, you know, it's not, you know, if the movie doesn't work for you, that's not necessarily your fault. It doesn't mean anything bad about you or the movie. Now, the movie is two hours and 19 minutes long, and I could maybe understand, you know, some, some people felt that it should be shorter, I was happy with the length. I, I really, like, I sat through the entire thing and I was wondering, okay, is this it? Is this when it's going to happen? Is this when it's going to click and it's going to, uh, I guess it's, but no, it never happened. Just, yeah, but, but I'm sure for a lot of people, the, the, you know, parts of it feel either too fast or too slow, too long, you know, and that's, you know, I, I get why that could be an, an issue because it definitely, there is a lot in this movie. So, this is the part where I'm supposed to choose the best element. Um, holy crap. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a tie. Okay, so there's how unique it is, there's how incredibly well acted it is, there's how creative it is, there's how just the ability to find something meaningful in something ridiculous. And this is where I'm supposed to choose the worst aspect. I don't. I don't think I have any. Um, I, I try to. I try to force myself to do this so that I'm saying at least something negative about even movies that I absolutely love. Ah, uh, I guess. No, I, I don't really, I, I don't, I don't have any, um, yeah, I, I, I have nothing, uh, truly negative to say about this. So, the worst thing according to others, now, I made the, the choice to, instead of just, like, quoting one after another after another, I have chosen to paraphrase what I, I saw a number of times. It wasn't made for me, and I don't understand that this doesn't mean it's bad. Also, despite dozens of people having already written this, many without explaining, but just using words like boring, confusing, as if those aren't subjective, I felt the need to write my own review rather than just upvote the IMDb user review I agreed most with. Also, I will question the motives and honesty of the positive reviews because I am too insecure to imagine that maybe other people disagree with me. And I've already mentioned, you know, I'm not saying absolutely every, not every piece of criticism launched at this is that. But I've already quoted the ones that I didn't think were ridiculous. So, the thing I was definitely most worried about was that it would be just too much. And, yeah, I get why it is for some people. It, it absolutely wasn't for me. The, the movie exceeded my expectations. The thing I was most looking forward to was... You know, basically several people, you know, said stuff like, oh, it's like an, you know, some people said it was like an ADHD movie, some people said it was like Acid Trip, and yeah, I've, I'm not sure I've seen a, another movie that's quite both, but yeah, that does definitely fit for this, and yeah, I've, this, it, it was even, like, even all the stuff that, you know, not everybody is careful about not spoiling stuff even even the the you know the trailer gives a lot of you know shows a lot of the most you know but yeah i still was not i i couldn't have guessed how 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 much of an adhd has a trip it is the trailer does give too much away i do not recommend watching it before uh, watching the movie but if you have like i just said there's still stuff that's not in the trailer that you couldn't guess going in. And the cover and poster also give too much away. 
in in both cases, if you don't show at least some of it, people aren't gonna be that interested. Like if you just say, "Oh, it's about Michelle Yeoh doing her taxes," and Jamie Lee Curtis is working for the IRS, you know. I'd watch that movie, but I'm sure a lot of people would be like, ah, it's, you know, it doesn't... Or at the very least, they wouldn't think you'd have to watch it in theaters, which, you know... I, I did see a bunch of people who really hated it and, and said, oh, don't spend money on it, don't watch it in theaters. I mean... <laughs> one more time, it made over $106 million dollars. Despite, like, you know, not very many, the, the, oh, wow. Apparently in some places, a woman tries to do her taxes is the alternate title of the movie, which, yeah, I guess that's less, less of a hint. But, yeah, you know, like, oh, let's go watch the new Jamie Lee Curtis movie. It should definitely make $106 million, you know. That's not necessarily, you know, she, yeah, the, the, yeah, evidently a lot of people did not take the advice of not watching the movie in theaters. So, on Rotten Tomatoes, this has a 95%, which makes it certified fresh based on 381 reviews, only 20 of which are rotten. The average rating is 8.60, and you might be thinking, oh, but, you know, a lot of people say they didn't like, you know, yeah, okay, critics, but what did people... People, the audience rating, is 88%, based on over 2,500 verified ratings. The average rating is 4.5 of 5, so, yeah. And, you know, I was wondering, oh, maybe maybe it's the, you know, the critics' consensus is, you know, positive. It says, led by an outstanding Michelle Yeoh, everything everywhere all at once lives up to its title with an expertly calibrated assault on the senses. Maybe the audience thing will be like, no, incredible acting, stunning visuals, really deep, powerful story, everything, everywhere, all at once has it all. Like, this is, this is extremely popular, you know, reception to, to, yeah. On Metacritic, it has an 81 out of 100, based on 54 critic reviews, 48 of them Positive sixth, six mixed, or mixed sixth, and an uh, seven point eight user, uh, you know, based on seven hundred eight ratings, five hundred fifty seven of them positive, fifty one mixed, one hundred negative. So a number of people did not like it. And the um, let's see, how many reviews were there again? I'm gonna real quick. There are. 250 user reviews on Metacritic, which is also pretty... That, that means that people cared. Not, not all of them are positive, but people cared. And on IMDB... Let's see... The... Um, oh, right. I'm... Yeah, yeah. I'll just real quick. So, there are 2,739... IMDb user reviews, and if you hide the spoilers, there's still 2,423. And the... Yeah. It has an 8.0 out of 10, based on 353,070 IMDb user votes. 25.6 or 10, 22.7 or 9, 22.3 or 8. This is this is a very positively received movie, you, you might say. 13.1% gave it 7, 6.3 gave it 6, 3.2 gave it 5, 2.5 gave it 1. I don't understand how anyone can give it 1, let alone 8,747 individuals, but to each their own. 1.8 gave it 4, 1.4 gave it 3, 1.1 gave it 2. And the, yeah, so I, I um, checked the ratings of the top voted 100 of the IMDb user reviews. 34 gave it 1 out of 10. So, yeah. 11 gave it 2, 12 gave it 3, 
5 gave it 4, 9 gave it 5, 6 gave it 6, 2 gave it 7, 3 gave it 8, 9 gave it 9, and 10 gave it 10. So a number of the reviews that were extremely negative were the most popular among the, the people upvoting reviews. And um, I'm not going to go over all of them, I swear. This has 336 wins and 355 nominations total, and is nominated for 11 Oscars. I'll just very briefly... Yeah, so Oscar for Best Original Screenplay, Original Score, Original Song, Best Picture, Best Achievement in Directing, Best... It's, yeah, Best Leading Actress for Michelle Yeoh, Best Supporting Actress, one for Stephanie Sue, one for Jamie Lee Curtis, Best Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role, K.A. Kwan, Best Achievement in Costume Design, very true, Best Achievement in Film Editing, so yeah, um, I say give them all, go all, all 11 of them, because it, it deserves all of them. Now, the... Um, yeah, so special effects, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I will say they did an incredible job. Clearly a number of them are practical, and that's part of why it works so well. You know, 14 million is not going to buy you a lot of really great CG. And, you know, we are in a time where, you know, I'm not the harshest critic, but some really big movies have been you know, criticized for its CG. I thought Ant-Man Quantumania, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania had, I, I, I liked it. I, I know that some of it looks like wonky, but I thought that was a, a choice, but I, I suppose maybe not. Uh, I've, I've heard some reports suggesting that it was, that they just, they, you know, they were overworked. You know, it's, it's a, it's a field that badly needs a, a labor union. But yeah, the you know that movie cost a, a lot more, and the the CG in that you know some people really didn't like, and then you have this where it's largely practical and it just it works like it just like obviously practical you know some people are like ah oh, you know practical effects it's still fake, it's tech it's still fake it's still an effect, but when it's practical, you know if if you if uh, if if something blows up in a movie and it's it's a um, uh, it's a miniature, like the it just registers like we can tell when something is there a, a lot of the time not always, where an an effect you know like a CG effect, there's something in the brain you know it's the it's the uncanny valley thing we can we can tell that no that's not that didn't happen like that, you know and. Yeah, you know, yes, it's still fake. It's still technically, you know, stuff that was done with effects they didn't do for real. But it just, it looks, you know, there's clearly something there. Clearly, some of that was real. Some of it happened, you know, and yeah, absolutely incredible. And it just such creative effects. Like, this is the kind of thing I haven't I haven't read if, if Sam Raimi thought that this was, was good, but... It feels like young Sam Raimi. You know, it's like, okay, if we have, if, if we put in enough time, if we're enthusiastic enough, and we make sure that there is, you know, there, there are, you know, effects, you still, you need some, you need some crafts, you need some craftsmanship, and you need the right materials, or it's just going to look fake. But if we put all that into it, you know, yeah, it's gonna, like, there are gonna be times where it's like, holy crap, can we just, are we done yet? But if we do, if we do it all, then by the end, it's gonna look amazing, you know, and yeah, that, th this really is, like, I, I would watch pretty much anything that these the the this duo direct next. Like almost any like regardless of what I hear that it's about. I I yeah, I I would pretty much and I really hope the next time it comes to a theater near me instead of having to wait, but you know, thankfully the library streaming site came through, but 
yeah, the, the, um, you know, yeah, that's the thing. Like, um, if you live in Denmark, Filmstrippen. And yes, I know it sounded like nonsense to everyone who doesn't speak Danish, but yeah. Um, let's see. The, um, yeah, the, the, um, the creativity on display, the, the, the practical effects, like, people, people who know how to do effects, they could, they could watch parts of this, and they're gonna be like, I didn't know we were allowed to still do that. I thought people were like, ah, we've seen it before, but, you know, if it works. And there's some really amazing stunt work. Um, I, I refuse to spoil, but holy crap, the stunt work was absolutely amazing. Now, there is some violence in this. Some people have felt it was excessively violent. Uh, I, I disagree, but definitely, like, if you don't like violence in movies, this might also be at least a little bit too much. It's it's not as violent, like, there's a lot more violent stuff out there, but there is, there is some violence, yeah. And there's some sexual material, which, you know, some people really freaked out about. Some people, like, I, you know, I didn't mind any of it. I have a very, very high bar. You, you really have to go extreme to, to, a lot of the sex, I should, I should clarify, a lot of the sex is played for laughs, you know, the, the sexual material. It's, it's not that I, in general, find sex stuff to be funny, but a lot of the sex stuff is played for laughs, and you have to go extreme, very extreme, before I'm like, okay, that's too far, that's too, you know, I don't, I don't need there to be sex jokes in my movies, but when there are, like, you can you can throw a lot in there without me being bothered. But for sure, like, some people will really hate that, and the movie is leaning into that. Like, this is a movie that's made to push buttons when it comes to, like, sex stuff. And, yeah, in the description box, I will put several links. It looks like it's going to be about four now to stuff that, yeah, for, unless I find more later, but yeah, you know, stuff that other, other YouTube that I recommend watching that's about this movie, or about them in general, and yeah. So, yeah, it's difficult to know exactly who to recommend this to, but I would definitely... Yeah, to, to to I've I've dropped a couple over the course of it. I think you if you if you aren't like um, either you know you have to be young or young at heart. Like you, there's a lot of information for your brain to absorb in this. You have to be open to like. You know, it's gonna do things like emotionally and and yeah. You you need to be ready that you know. Apparently, some people really didn't were not ready to accept the LGBTQ positivity and the you know Chinese culture. So yeah, yeah. I rate this 10 heartfelt emotional acid trips out of 10. I, I, uh, there's, there's nothing in this movie, not a single thing, that I legitimately feel like, okay, that's, like, just, no, no, all of it, all of it worked for me. I might watch this movie again later today. Um, yeah. So, let's see, I guess, yeah, uh, uh right, one thing, I, I do still really love, um, uh, I can't believe I'm blanking on the name, Doctor Strange in the multiverse of madness but I do think this movie is better and the let's see yeah yeah um so I let's see yeah yeah let's the um 
I've been really happy with dark progressive films that are horror and or comedy of recent years. I've agreed with the messages in progressive movies and shows for many years, but I think in recent years the filmmakers have gotten better at making it biting, not holding back, and trying to politely ask that right-wingers don't destroy the planet and kill us all. So, yes, I ranking the, the ones that I've watched worst to best, including this one, and I loved all of them other than Antlers. Antlers, Not Okay, The Menu, Ready or Not, Barbarian Fresh, The Night House, and this. Yes, it is even better than The Night House, which I did not think that movie would be topped for me anytime soon. But, yeah, the just, holy crap, I, yeah. And that brings us to the spoiler section, which starts with the section notes taken while watching. So this is a series of thoughts, some of his analysis, some of his MST 3K riff tracks and other jokes. And I yeah, before I get in you know, just in case you watched a little further. Yeah, so this is an action comedy sci-fi mystery thriller, basically. That's yeah. They they really did hit. I, I guess the only the only genre that I can't really, I, I couldn't really call it a western. But other than that, you know, the the remaining ones are history, biography, and sports. You know, the so the the very like ah the genres that are for like real stuff, you know, the the stuff that's closer to, like, documentary. Anyway, um, so yeah, at the, at the start we see mom, daughter, and dad performing karaoke in the mirror, but then we go to the, so yeah, I guess that's a glimpse at one of the worlds where the, that family, family is happier together. Maybe that's something that happens after the end of the movie, because they are a tighter-knit family unit then. So, yeah. And, you know, it's, a, it's the first time we see that through mirrors you can see the, the other universes in the multiverse. And... Let's see... Yeah, I, I really like the way that they switch between languages, the... the you know, depending on which family member they're talking to and such. And immediately we see the divorce papers, and I appreciate this detail that, like, you know, later on, he's, you know, he explains, no, it's, I want us to talk, I want us to, to deal with this, but you're always so busy, so I figured, you know, if if I make it a thing, you have to deal with it. You know, I, I really appreciated that. Detail. I, I gotta say, when I, when I first saw it, I, I did think, wow, that's okay, you know, I, I, I guess he really wants out, but no, you know, almost everything in this movie, it's like the first time you see it, you get one impression, and then later you realize something else, so that, I, I really appreciate that, that's like real life, you know, a lot of first impressions are wrong, and I'm, like, when when Becky goes up and kisses Joy, if you don't think that's sweet, I don't even know how to talk to you. We are speaking different languages, and I don't want to learn yours. And yeah, the the thing with the the gender pronouns that she's struggling with that was, you know, the the she's like in in Chinese we only have one word for you know it's so so yeah I'm sorry I accidentally called. Him, him, or her, him, I mean. And, let's see. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we, we hear that the, or, yeah, the movie presents the f sad fact that the IRS is very hard on immigrants. And I feel like the, the movie, the, the opening of the movie does such a great job establishing all the stress that Evelyn is under. And I really loved when, uh, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, um, Wayman, when Wayman, you know, 
the the um we see through the you know because the the laundromat the uh, security cameras you know you see him turn and he's like jumping over stuff and just yeah really really impressive and the you know so so heartbreaking when you know the the when when Evelyn has to has you know introduce Becky to Gong Gong and she's like she is uh, Joy's very good friend you know and it's just the look the look on Joy's face you know and you know Ricky goes back like Ricky is inappropriate on multiple occasions but he's like inappropriate in different ways like at first you know he's he's like you know the, yeah the, at, at first he's just like oh you know the machine ate my 20 he's he's being polite about it you know some some people would freak out at that point and it's also you know the fact that they have a relationship already you know she knows him he knows her so you know the there's some more empathy there which i really appreciate because that is sometimes you know, immigrants don't get that much empathy until they get to know the the people, which can be very difficult because a lot of people aren't willing to let them in. Emotionally, I mean. But but yeah, you know, then then he's like, oh, you should, you use the same t t t perfume as my wife, which does you know is important later. But don't tell someone you have that kind of relationship with that. That's creepy. And then, you know, there's, and, and he's like dan dancing around with Waymond, although I guess that's more of a thing on Waymond, that he's always silly. Was that a way to get him calm about the 20, maybe? Anyway, and then he's like, no, you, I said 20, you gave me back a 10. And then he says the thing about, I, I don't, I'm not comfortable repeating it. But yeah, the, the, you know, he makes a racist, uh, statement about uh, you know Asians and math and the let's see yeah I, I like the detail that you know we can see that both Wayman and Evelyn miss romance you know they 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 are they do still love each other but it's been a while since they kiss and then at the end of the movie they do you know and the you know yeah, I, I quite like that, and I, I gotta say, I did not expect the movie that the, the with the dance, the movie that's on in the in the laundromat. I did not think that would keep coming up as a you know, and then the sausage fingers, and they're caressing each other, and ketchup and mustard come out of their fingers because the just wow. Um, oh right, I guess. This is a decent time to say. So, so basically, if you watch this far, if you, you know, actually, yeah, whether you watch the movie or not, I feel like a big part of the reason that you don't really get lost, uh, despite all the multiverse stuff, is that it is so focused, like, it's almost all about this one little family, and especially the, the, um, Evelyn... Joy and uh, Waymond. You know, it's about their relationships with each other across the multiverse. It's about the the yeah. You know, it's it's based at at its core. It's about the the relationship between Evelyn and Joy, and the, the right big props to making it. Apparently, originally they were gonna make it. You know, the Evelyn character was supposed to be male. But they changed it, and I really appreciate that. You know, it, way too many. That uh, that's also part. That's also part of why some people hated it. A lot of misogynists cannot empathize with women, so they were like, "I don't understand. Where's the Where's the dude who's going to fix this?" The the let's see. Um, yes. Another thing is that visually, you can always tell when someone is you know, going between universes because of the editing, the acting, and the cinematography. Like, you can tell, oh, wow, the, the that other Evelyn just 
like moved her head back and then like refocuses okay i guess our evelyn went there and you know is is trying to you know yeah ab absorb those abilities and then go back and the yeah you know they they did such a great like this has so much more multiverse stuff than like okay multiverse of madness there's some really important and, and spider verse both of them have some really important multiverse stuff but they don't get anywhere near like it's there's got to be like over a dozen different worlds in this different universes in the multiverse in this one movie and like because they you know and also just it's such a clever idea to say you can access the memories and abilities of people from all across the multiverse all different versions of you you know so just you you need to you know um you need a uh like a, a cue, you need to do something statistically improbable in order to, to access, you know. So, yeah, we see them do something weird, and then you see, the, oh, singer, so greater lung capacity makes sense, you know. And the, the just, yeah, it's it's so, yeah, and it's actually, you know, early on, you know, Wayman is trying to, to fix things with, you know, he's, he's trying to, to get the IRS to, to, to you know, calm down a little bit, and they're like, you know, karaoke machine, and he's like, she's a singer, sing for her. Please don't ever ask someone to sing in public if it's not like 100%, like a million percent appropriate. Like that's, wow, and that's not a Chinese thing, to, to be clear. I've once been asked to sing in public, and I, you know, I'm, I'm very, very glad that I had the wherewithal to just say, no, nah, I don't think it's appropriate, and the other person dropped it, but that's a thing, please don't, please don't tell other, no matter how good a singer you think they are, you know, but, but yeah, and in one, in one of the universes, she did become a singer, you know, now, let's see, the um, uh, yeah yeah the the um, the elevator wow that was a that was a lot of information and I'm really impressed that I, I I believe I got all of it so that's very impressive for for just yeah and you know the we we see the the birth of Evelyn and you know her father is told sorry it's a girl you know and that kind of set you know yeah and and like we don't we don't know for sure but i can imagine something similar might have happened when joy was born you know and let's see yeah and you know she's told you you can either go left or right irs or the the um supply closet i guess uh, you know she does go to the irs but she does check the directions and that was like a you know, okay you know shoes and and thing you know hold that thought and then the just yeah and let's see yeah you know the some of the business expenses, you know, just, like, she's a little too, you know, it is that thing of she she doesn't always, like, she'll, she'll start down a road and then go back in another direction kind of thing, you know, hence the, the business expenses being, that's not stuff you can, you can make a business expense, you know. And, you know, I, I like the thing, you know, relax your body in the other universe. And it's just, yeah. And, and we see through the, the mirror. And, you know, I, I quite like the... Deirdre 
like punches through the door and attacks and oh that's right yeah and that's the and and then later that that was the the temporary thing and then later when joy when the alpha joy i i do not recall the the i'm, I'm not gonna i would i would butcher it if i tried so i'm not gonna try but the the alpha joy comes in and says no this isn't the right evelyn you know because it's the what was it a temporary just yeah you know, and, and, yeah, now Evelyn is afraid of Deirdre, you know, back at the, the IRS, and I, I quite like, you know, she, she does the, these little movements that's like, oh, is she gonna come attack, like, we don't necessarily think, because we, we understand, but we do, we feel it, you know, like, like she does, she also, like, intellectually, she understands that was a different one, but, you know, again, like, I really appreciate, holy crap, Deirdre, I did not expect it to end with like sausage finger Deirdre and Evelyn. You know, I think the last time we see them, they're like embracing their you know love loving embrace, and the you know the last time the you know the Evelyn that went home to do her taxes, you know Deirdre shows up. You didn't show up with the papers, and you. You told me to shut up over the phone. You know the, this thing. Of, you know you have to do. It. And and then they're they're hugging out right outside the the laundromat at the end. I I did not see that coming. But that that's the like Jamie Lee Curtis. She's willing to be really unpleasant. She's and she's capable of making a seemingly unpleasant person actually really vulnerable. Also, like she's just so unbelievably talented. I'm really really glad she's still working. And let's see, yeah, and the and the miscommunication about the divorce papers or the directions, you know, he's like, you know, so so it's because of this, and he's looking at the divorce, or yeah, yeah, he's looking at the divorce side, and she, you know, while she's looking at the directions, and she's like, you gave it to me, the, the you know, because Alpha Wang Wham and Alpha Waymond gave the the directions to it. Just, yeah, and I really like. Okay, it's it's like, it wouldn't be funny, if it was like if it did actually like do serious damage and so and and I mean the rest of them actually yeah the rest of the movie is follow is, is consequences for that. Evelyn thinks that it's the the evil Deirdre. So she smacks her in the face, and Deidre's like, what are you doing, you know? <laughs> because she was looking so intense as she walked over there, but she was like, you know, like, she was going to tell her something right before she left the building, or something, you know, and she is kind of intense, she's an intense person, you know, she's, but it wasn't, you know, and yeah, like, the rest of the movie, like, even at the end of the movie, there's still some security guards left that she called for the... Yeah, I gotta say, I love that so much of it is in the IRS building. You know, they really got so much just... Yeah, I I don't even, like... Um... Crap, was this the... Ah, I think this was the one. I've been, I watch a lot of behind the scenes, you know, but I think this was the one where they talked about that the decision to have it set in this office building meant that, you know, you had the set where they were filming everything, and then, like, you you know, you open a door, there's wardrobe. You open another door, there's the, the prop department, you know. So they can, they could have these wild ideas and be like, I guess we could do that, yeah, sure. And, you know, walk, you know, walk into the other room, walk back, and you're on the set, and you can do it. So they could be very creative, you know. So yeah, that is. I I I will. I was never bored that they were. But but yeah, you know, a big chunk of this movie is the them in the IRS building. And yeah, you know, she calls security because she thinks that this, you know, from her point of view, you know, oh, she's, you know, I'm being assaulted by this. You know, just, yeah. 
and I really, really love the the build up to the the fight with the security. Like you could so easily have just you know, let's see, did they use the elevator? I think they came. Yeah, elevator doors open, fight. But no, elevator doors open. Deirdre's like, it's her, and they're like, okay. Everybody calm down. You, hands behind your heads, down on the ground, you know, and, like, the, the, you know, and Evelyn is like, oh, I guess we gotta, you know, and, and Wayman, like, changes, and, you know, that was nasty. He, he bit the, the chapstick and chewed it up. But yeah, that is a statistically improbable thing, you know. I didn't mind the gross out jokes, you know. I, I, it was pretty funny, all of it, honestly. But yeah, the, the, you know, and the, let's see, and the, yeah, and then he gets the, the fanny pack. Wow. He gets the fanny pack and the, the, you know, belt all the way out so he can swing it. And he hits them in the, you know, and, and at one point he puts, like, was it, like, rocks or sand or you know, wet sand, I think it might have been, from, like, um, an aquarium, you know, a personal aquarium. It's, you know, you don't get to, you don't get to bring a lot of stuff into a cubicle, but some stuff like that, you might, you know, so, and, and hits and in the face and one of them, like, gets, uh, you know, into into nose, and he yanks and smash nose first into the floor. Just yeah, and one of the security guards is is a woman. And later on, there's even uh, am I remembering right that there was a black woman, or was it that there was a woman and a black something like that? But yeah, you know, they can be security guards too. You know, and. Let's see. I I I am extremely protective of the first Terminator movie. I maintain that it's one of the best movies ever made. You have to be extreme. You really have to tread lightly if you're going to reference that, or I'm going to be pissed. And I love this reference. I love that Wayman goes up up to Evelyn and says the words, "Come with me if you want to live." up to your potential. I, I realize, you know, slightly rephrased, but that was that was a very clear reference and I loved it. That was so good. And yeah, we find out they're from the the uh the leader is from Universe 4655 and, and it's like a cult basically. She's like be grateful that you get to meet the leader of just yeah and you know, Joy kills Evelyn just by touching her, realizes it's not the, the Evelyn she was looking for, and goes into our Joy, which, yeah, you know, I, I appreciate, they never really, they never really kept it hidden, you know, because we, like, almost right after we meet her, I'm not, I think we only see Eve, uh, Alpha Joy's face when we when when she comes face to face with uh, our Evelyn, but I guess I'll just call her Evelyn for for short, and I'll say if I mean if I'm talking about one of the alternates. But the yeah, you know, it's pretty clear. Okay, that's got to be, and yeah, like I think within two minutes of us seeing like the shape of her, we don't see her face at first. You know, she jumps on into another universe, and I mean that's Joy. Becky's right there. Becky says, "Is is that your mom on TV? Where are you going?" You know, so so yeah, definitely. Let's see, and yeah, we find out that this is Alpha Waymond, and we're told that Alpha Evelyn was the first to discover the the verse jumping which that that is a really cool idea that the you know this thing of because she that was that thing you know she's she's not good at anything so she's capable of learning everything basically you know that's that's such a great that's such a healthy perspective to have because a lot of uh, you know yeah i do sometimes feel like there's 
ah, I guess I'm just good at nothing, you know. But yeah, that's yeah. I I try to look at it that way too. That that means I can take bits and pieces from everywhere. And let's see. Yeah, and you know, Alpha Evelyn is dead. So, <laughs> and she's like, you're just making up sounds now. All sounds are made up. And the let's see. Um, yeah, the, the, you know, the, the, um, Alphaverse, you know, they, they want to bring fix, bring things back to the way they're supposed to be. And they, you know, your clothes don't fit right. Even coffee tastes different. You know, these things, is like, it's just... The the what's it called? You know, it's it's a yeah. I I think we all feel like things could be better than they are right now, and this idea, yeah. Let's see. And and I like a point about it's difficult to give yourself a paper cut because <laughs> it happens when you don't know. You know, so that was. And it's just such tense and suspenseful scene as, uh, let's see, is that, I think it's when Deidre is, is headed down, you know, and, and yeah, there, there's just, yeah. And I, yeah, we have a very matrixy scene where Evelyn is hiding, you know, from Deidre in this office building, and, yeah, it's a lot like Neo hiding from the agents early in the first Matrix. And, yeah, I, I really, the, the, when, when Evelyn has to confess her love to Deidre and mean it, you know, she tries several times but just can't bring herself to, and then by the end we find, you know, it's no, she can love Deidre under the right circumstances in other universes, she certainly can. So, just, yeah, and very, very sad when when Alpha Wayman says, You know, you're not the right Evelyn and and leaves. And the 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 version of of Evelyn that learns. Kung Fu, and the, the, you know, uses, yeah, that was really, really great, and, um, let's see, uh, what does that mean? I use a lot of shorthand in my notes to not use up too much paper, uh, let's see, Oh, right, right, yeah, the, the Kung Fu-wielding actress. I mean, that's basically real-life Michelle Yeoh, so that's super cool. She actually gets to play herself in the, just, yeah. And... Ah, uh, what is that? I don't know what that means. Uh, oh, oh, right, yeah. Every single fight in, in the movie, I actually care. I care about the all the people involved. You know, the action is always cool, but it's never just cool. And I like the thing about, you know, all the cows are dead, so they really miss dairy. So, the you know, he's sitting there like... Does he drink, like, um, cream directly? From, something like that, yeah. And... Yeah, and you know, she says, "What could be worse than death?" And we find out that Alpha Evelyn pushed Alpha Joy too far, and now she's looking for Evelyn. And I loved seeing Joy. Alpha Joy limbo under police tape. Like, that was amazing. Just, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, I like the exploration of the temptation to live other lives. And, 
yeah, security catches up to them, and <laughs> an Alpha Joy has like a, a little pig, and I really like the the thing with uh, what's it called again? The um 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 yeah, that's right on the tip of my tongue. Um, let's see. Yes, when, you know, we right after we meet Alpha Joy, you know, she basically... Oh, right, I guess we did see her face when she limboed under. Anyway, the, the you know, right after she comes close to, to, our, to, to Evelyn, she basically explains her philosophy, you know, that you, you can't be here. Do you mean I can't physically be here, or do you mean I shouldn't be here? Because I can have anything I want, kind of thing, you know, so that's, yeah. And and that's basically, you know, the only thing, you know, she, she hates the idea that there's something that she couldn't, yeah, and she takes out the security guards, and one of them, she, like, she explodes him into confetti, and we see just the, like, the the head explode into confetti, and it's like, I, I mean, it's super easy to do, you know, they, they just, they, they had the actor there, and then the you know they they set up a thing where it looks like the the actor I don't know I guess it's possible that they use green screen or other or green, yeah green hood for for his face but otherwise yeah honestly that's probably it but anyway then they they get the you know confetti blower thing you know blow that in front of the camera and and edit to you know it's it's super easy to do but it just it's such a great yeah, and, and she dances one of them to death, and she does a wrestling thing with one of them. And, you know, she... And, and we have the... The, the dildo! <laughs> like, they're, like they're nunchucks, and just... So funny. And, you know, she gets shot, but it's ketchup. Don't worry, it's organic. And and the the thing with you know and and then Evelyn is like I knew it this is why you like girl you know this is why my joy is a lesbian and and Alpha Joy is like are you serious right now do you still not accept that I like girls it just holy crap and the hot dog finger universe is like does that mean hey, uh, why why hot I don't know I guess. Uh, it was just, it was evolutionary, it was an evolutionary advantage, you know, we get, we go to, like, monkeys, and one of them has hot dog fingers and beats another monkey to death, and yeah, you know, the, one of the alphas took out the other alpha, and that alpha then impregnates all the, all the women, and uh, the females of the species, it's just, yeah. And, let's see. And um, yeah, <laughs> and Deirdre with the with the Deirdre with the hot dog fingers watching the the romantic movie, and you know the and and she actually you know shows affection towards um to, towards Evelyn you know and and she's actually upset that Evelyn is pushing her away. And I appreciate that, you know, Joy toys with, with Evelyn very, like, sadistically. And, like, technically this movie has a villain, you know. If, if you want to go by, that, you know, the, the hero is, the, the protagonist is a hero that stops a great evil. And, and the, the antagonist is essentially a villain, you know, cult leader going around. She can she can do anything she wants, and she chooses evil. You know, like, think about it. If she wanted, she could just, like, 
she could give the the security guards what they want and then they'd be happy and not as Evelyn does at the end you know it is this it's nihilism versus the the altruistic idea you know so yeah uh, you know she has yeah she she is technically evil but i care so much more about her than most you know comic book movie villains and uh, you know some of them are also great let's and yeah, you know, we we are introduced to the everything bagel, and she, you know, Joy Alpha Joy says that nothing matters, and some people appear to think that that's the message of the movie. We really need to do something about the media literacy. It, like so many people hear the villain state the villain's philosophy, and then go away from the movie saying, "So I'm supposed to believe?" No, you're not. That's why it's the villain saying it. If the villain says something, like, a, some movies will challenge that, but a lot of the time, if the villain says something, that's basically the movie saying, this is wrong. You know, that's just... I suppose I won't... Uh, I'm not going to spoil that movie, but I'll just say that there was a similar problem with a lot of... You know, a lot of people thought that that was what... That that th what the villain says in the Last Jedi, they thought that that was supposed to be the message of the movie. Let's see, and we meet Alpha Gong Gong, which is yeah, and we're you know the so many failures that she can do anything, and this is the part where I realized we did see Alpha Gong Gong eating a lot of dairy earlier. You know she. The, the, we just hear the thing, oh, we're, we're keeping him under surveillance. And then it cuts, and he's just sitting there, like, chowing down, you know, like, all of these little, you know, uh, yogurt cups, you know. And at the time, we don't necessarily think anything of it, because it's just, I don't know, I guess he's, but maybe they didn't give him enough food to, you know, we saw that he was hungry earlier. I don't know, maybe that, that was Alpha Gong Gong you know he he wasn't needed at the time so he yeah he sat there in it dairy and he you know he legitimately wasn't they were doing okay on, up until the point where he saves them and i um the ratatouille thing with a raccoon raccoonatui that was unbelievably funny and and actually heartfelt after a while like i don't even how do you... Because that's the thing. Like, the Daniels were like, what if Ratatouille, but with a raccoon? And it's actually a really emotional thing. You know, they make it... A, it's just, yeah. Such a... Such a... Yeah. Let's see. And, and honestly... Uh, uh, yeah, I suppose... I, I think I saw someone say, ah, not the very best, like animatronic that I've ever seen, it's not completely convincing, you know, I, I was so into the emotion of it that I didn't, it wasn't distracting for me. Now, yeah, and, you know, Alpha Gong Gong tells Evelyn to kill Joy, and, which would mean she'd be no fun anymore, and it does look like she's going to you know, she's got the, the little exacto knife, I think it's called, and exacto mundo knife. And she goes over and it looks, oh, what are you going to do? You know, and, and Joy is still, there's still enough tape around her that she wouldn't be able to, to really stop Evelyn. But then she cuts the tape and Wayman is like, I almost had it. <laughs> Wayman is adorable. The, the, um, I, ah, crap, I, yeah, I haven't watched it yet, because I wanted to do the video as soon as, uh, at all possible, but there is a, um, th yeah, there's a video called Everyone Everywhere Needs Wayman Wang and Kei, Kei Hui Kwan, and it's by the Pop Culture Detective, so I'm sure it's excellent, and yeah, honestly, like, we should all have someone so helpful and patient and you know yeah sometimes he doesn't not everything works out great but 
he's trying. You know, he really does want things to just, yeah. And, yeah, you know, Evelyn makes the choice that actually, yeah, I guess it's around the halfway point of the movie, and the entire rest of the movie is the, the Alphaverse people trying to stop her. She refuses to kill uh, Joy. And the, the, yeah, you know, it is that thing of, you know, Alpha, you know, Gong Gong rejected her, and now Alpha Gong Gong is saying you have to kill, you know, even our Joy, even the Joy that isn't, you know, that hasn't done something wrong, so that she won't be so powerful, you know, so that way she can't jump into, you know, she has to work through others instead of herself being in this universe, because she's literally, like, she can do anything she wants if she's in the universe that, that she wants to affect, you know, so, yeah, the, the, it's, it's that thing, she, she has to decide, am I going to do to my daughter what my father did to me, and that's extremely important, like, everyone has to, every parent has to, at some point, choose affirmatively or uh, not to do what their parents did in a similar circumstance, you know, and it changes everything, you know. Um, my father was basically never shown, you know, his, his own father never showed him any, ah, uh, what's it called? Crap, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Um, not crap, I don't have crap on the tip of my tongue. Affection. Uh, and, you know, barely even spoke to him. Basically didn't, you know, he, he thought that that's the mother's job. You know, that was the, the thinking at the time. And my father chose that he would never do that uh, to, to one of his children. And... Yeah, he's, he's, you know, given us all affection and encouragement. And, you know, we've all, like, the, the, yeah, we've, we've all really benefited from that. Even though that wasn't what his father did to him, you know, he, it, it was a choice. He, he could choose to do the same thing, you know, whether, you know, there's, yeah, there's, there's different reasons for, for making, you know, maybe out of, like, out of spite or pettiness, or because he thought that, I mean, I guess my father knew better, or, you know, but, yeah, he, he made the choice, and, yeah, every, every parent has to, at some point, make a choice like that, and I really appreciate that this movie communicates, because, yeah, basically, like, Gong Gong did make the wrong choice when he rejected her. It, or, um, he made a very hurtful choice when he rejected her. Uh, I guess uh, at the end of the day, she still she persevered, not because of him, but in spite of him. Uh, you know, and at the end of the at the very end of the movie, he has a choice. He, you know, are you going to reject your granddaughter? for being lesbian, and he chooses, no, I'm, you know, you know what, how, how much longer does he have? Is he gonna live the rest of his life hating his granddaughter for who she is? Is he really gonna, like, just be bitter and angry, you know, and, and at the end of the day, everyone has the, you know, it can be extremely difficult, it can, it can, it can hurt, it can be, it can be very, very challenging, but we do have a choice in whether, you know, you don't choose the, the first, like, your first instinct might be, you know, um, yeah, you might be to, to accept your family even when they do something wrong, or to reject them because you think that's what's right, but you can choose whether or not to, to, to travel further down that path or to, to change. And I love Wayman so much. Family discussion. It's time for a family discussion, you know. Okay, father-in-law, stop pointing a gun at 
your granddaughter and my daughter. Evelyn, let's let's please, you know, we, we got to figure this out. Let's nobody do anything right. Just so, like, yeah. And, you know, Alpha Gong Gong said, tells Evelyn, you know, Alpha Evelyn made Alpha Joy, and she could go down that exact same path. And the the Alpha people from the van, the the you know, jump into people in the in the main universe, and we have a massive fight between the you know all of the the verse jumpers and. Um, wait, was it first Alpha Wayman, maybe, and then Evelyn? Ah, I, I don't remember every single detail, but yeah, that, absolutely amazing. Like, we live in a, in an age where so many of these, so many big action movies is just faceless nobodies that are being fought, and then, you know, it, it means less emotional attachment, you know, the, the studios do it because, well, then we can do anything to them, basically, you know, it doesn't matter how awful what one of the heroes does, because they're, they're the bad guy, you know, and we don't know anything about them anyway, and here, like, I know everyone who fights in these, you know, I, I at least a little bit about them, I, none of them are just complete, yeah. The butt plug jumping is really funny. Like the <laughs> the Daniels told an actor, "Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna spot a butt plug, get an idea, pull your pants down, and then try to jump butt first onto the butt plug." And he did it. And honestly, I'm not going to claim that I would say no to the Daniels if they were telling me something ridiculous, because they know what they're doing, clearly. But the, just, yeah, and, and Evelyn, like, grabs the butt plug and moves it, and moves it, just amazing, just, yeah. And the, and the pinky biceps thing was amazing. And Alpha Wayman dies, and they don't even get a last kiss. Very sad. And, you know, Evelyn tries to, you know, frantically tries to get, and, and vomits and passes out instead. And we get a fake-out ending. I can't describe how amazing it was that the events of the movie up to that point had been a movie in the Michelle Yeoh version of Evelyn that's amazing like and and it wasn't even the first time we saw it you know there was like we did briefly see was it maybe during the butt plug i think it was the butt plug jumping then we you know it cuts to michelle yo playing herself and uh, you know and, and people are like laughing and she's a little embarrassed and then the end credits run and it's even directed by the daniels they they you know they didn't feel the need to to put somebody else's name on it it's just yeah, you know, and, and at that point, like, I feel, I think the movie had run for long enough that I, I saw someone theorize, maybe some of the people who don't like it thought that was the ending and, like, left before the end credits, because, like, there's maybe 20 seconds of end credits that run before, like, it's completely clear, okay, no, 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 the movie's not over, it's just, that, that was part one, you know. And... The, the, yeah, the verse jumpers, uh, wait, is it the verse jumpers or the verse jumping? The, the, I think it was the verse jumping that's completely out of control, and, yeah, the, you know, we see that, um, the, the, what's it called? Oh, right, yeah, this is when we see Raccoon Ratatouille, I think, with, before it was just mentioned, and it was like, wait, are you talking about Ratatouille? And it's, yeah, and Deirdre with Sausage Fingers loves Evelyn. And let's see, yeah, and I think this is when Alpha Joy says, you see it all. And we get a Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon reference. That's awesome. And 
one of them, they're fighting in animated kids' drawings, like the, the kind you, you would hang up on the fridge. I forget if we saw, if we had, might, might have seen that it was actually up on the fridge, and it's like, you know, there's, there's blood, and it's a big pool of red, and they become pinatas, briefly, and I can't, I, 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 Stephanie Sue is amazing in this movie, and I have got to see her in other stuff. I don't think I have. Yeah, it doesn't, I, I'm not recognizing her other credits. Um, holy crap, she was in, she was in Shang-Chi. As Sue, I do not, ah, crap, I don't, that doesn't ring a bell. I guess I could, oh, that's right, holy crap, that's right, the lawyer friend, the serious lawyer friend. Yeah, yeah, I do remember her. That's, yeah. She was great in that, too. Anyway, when when they're, like, fight, you know, just, okay, so hit me. And, you know, it goes through all these different permutations. And she does end up hitting her. And and she goes into the, the sofa. And then Wayman's like, what are you doing? You're supposed to... The, did you did you not hand in the, the tax papers? We have to, you know, it's, it's almost six o'clock or something like that. And and then he spots and he's like, why is why is her daughter lying on the sofa? And and Evelyn says we're practicing karaoke for tonight, and we get a close up. Uh, or actually, no, no, it's not even a close up. It's like a medium shot, and she's like lying there on the sofa, and she goes la la la. She could choose to just be silent. She could choose to just nod her head or something. But no, it's this sarcastic, you know, yeah, very, like, sarcastic young person, like, yeah, karaoke, whatever, la, la, la. <laughs> I, I, I just, I love that choice. I don't know if it was actor or writer, writer, director, or whoever, but I love that choice. That was, that was really, really I absolutely cracked up at that. And then the, let's see, um, hmm, oh wow, I do not, Alpha, Alpha Joy, Evelyn, oh, no, I I am not sure what. The, anyway, um, yeah, she you know, she tells Evelyn, you can see and feel as I do, and that's what she wanted. She didn't want to kill her, you know, which does like when you think back. Oh, the other Evelyn, she killed her. Oh, actually, yeah, I guess she wasn't trying to kill her. She was trying to to bring her to the the temple place, and the the head exploded. Because it was a, what was a temporary version of Evelyn or something like that. So, yeah, yeah, like the, you know, um, like uh, I guess the equivalent of trying to follow a, a shortcut if, to a file that you've deleted, something like that. You know, it just goes, oh, no, never mind, can't. I'm just going to really quickly check if that. Yeah, that can wait. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I noticed that you know disrespect is is a bit of a theme in, and the you know we we see the various parts of the multiverse and Evelyn is breaking Wayman's heart, breaking Deidre's heart, and they become anime for just like a fraction of a second. They become rocks. Just be a rock. I really loved all the rock stuff, but the part where they were laughing, just really, like, the, the, you know, she's like, are you, are you serious, is that seriously something you care about? And then everyone's like, it was a joke. And they start laughing, it just, yeah. And, yeah, the, you know, Alpha Joy doesn't want to destroy 
the you know she wants she wants to destroy herself she you know she's basically yeah the, the you know that is the the um, you know if you look at the fact that like there's a there are you know billions of things going on that we can't control you know yeah you could and and the you know we are we are technically if if you want to be completely scientific about it we are infinitesimally small we are insignificant in the grand theme of the overall universe theoretical multiverse in real life you know and yeah some people when they when when that thought really takes hold the they they consider suicide and that is basically what we're seeing with with alpha and you know she she has determined she she um she is determined to commit suicide she just doesn't want to do it alone and that is also how some people feel and then we find out you know waymond the the um yeah waymond got them another week to do their taxes you know and, and he says i don't know what the heck is going on but I feel like it's my fault, and it's just, wow, that's relatable. Sad and relatable. And she says, we have to be kind, especially when we don't know what's happening. And that's, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, you know, that's that's such an excellent point. That That really is, you know... We don't know the struggles of the people that are saying and doing things that are upsetting us. So, yeah, be, be kind to them. I just got to make sure real quick that it... Um... Okay, yeah. Perfect. Now, the... Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Um, so sweet when Wayman says, I could spend another life doing laundry and taxes with you. You know, because that Evelyn has explained what the... the... Oh, wait, I, no, I guess it's because they watched the movie together. And then she explains that the movie is... is that she experienced temporarily being the person from the movie and the yeah and you know yeah that's like find you someone who would who thinks that way about you know and she summons the people and it starts pulling in just yeah and deirdre says to you know yeah deirdre basically you know, try. Uh, yeah, she 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 tries to to relate her her philosophy basically to Evelyn and says it's it's us cold, unlovable people who keep the world running. And that's the th you know yeah she does legitimately believe that she is unlovable. And the. You know, and, and yeah, and like for sure, there are some people who think that, who think that we have to be cold. We can't be, you know, and I, in my opinion, that is a, it's a, it's a, what's it called? It's rationalizing. It's, it, you know, if you feel like you're unlovable, maybe you devote yourself to some kind of like completely fact-based thing, like, the, you know, like, clearly, just, they need a little bit more understanding when it comes to, to their, like, empathy, I mean, you know, and, and, you know, they're at the end, they do, they did do better, you know, she says, there's still some work to do, but, you know, and that's, yeah, the, the, you know, and, and she says, no one is, you know, there's always something to love, which is such a healthy perspective, and, you know, in my stronger moments, I believe that. And the thing with, you know, if they have hot dogs for fingers, they get really good with their feet. So she's playing piano, you know, she's, and she stops playing piano when Evelyn comes in because she's like self-conscious and Evelyn's like, no, play something for me. And it's just so freaking sweet. 
And yeah, you know, Evelyn loves Deidre, which she couldn't earlier. Earlier, she couldn't even believe that she was really confessing her love. But that was, you know, yeah, I mean, each time that they do something statistically improbable, they jump to another, they're, they're able to jump to another universe. And yeah, it was statistically improbable, but in the infinite multiverse, yeah, there is an Evelyn who loves Deidre, and that Deidre loves her back. And, you know, is a lot more in touch with her emotions, isn't so harsh with other people. And, you know, guns are fired, and she stops the bullets in the air, which, you know, okay, so that seems like very Matrixy. Then she turns them into googly eyes and shoots them back at people. That was amazing. That was not something that would happen in the Matrix. And let's see, yeah, and the and the rocks moving, you know, like one of the things with the rock was basically, you know, she she was trying like Alpha Joy is basically trying to, you know, she's she's telling Evelyn, you know, there is. You know, is, isn't, look at how meaningless this is, you know, or wait, or is she the one who says, there's, uh, actually, never mind, I'm not sure if she, but, but anyway, you know, she's saying there's limitations there, and Evelyn is like, no, not if we don't want there to be, you know, I'm, I'm coming for you, I'm coming, you know, I'm gonna give you a hug, that was just, yeah, and, and Alpha Joy, you know, moves away as a rock. And, and she, yeah, some of the, some of the Alphaverse people, Evelyn marries to each other. One of them, she performs chiropractic, you know, on, and one of, you know, the Ricky one gets perfume. The, the other guy gets the ball gag and spanking. Just, yeah, so just, because it is that thing, you know, you, you do essentially... You know, it can be difficult to see, but you do have a choice when someone is, you know, in um, in some way, like, you know, not literally the way, you can't literally do what Evelyn does in the movie, but, you know, metaphorically speaking, when someone does something that upsets you, you can approach them, you know, with, with you, you know, you can, you can fire that back at them, you can be harsh at them, or you can be understanding and loving and you know that she doesn't have to fight any of the ones that she makes happy you know i think that is and you know the the thing with rakatui you know she's like no we can save him and yeah and and evelyn confronts gong gong and she says, I, you know, and, and expresses pride of joy. She's her pride and joy. Which actually, that, I think that might be intentional. You know, she legitimately, her name is Joy. She is her pride and joy. And, you know, the, yeah, except the lesbianism. And, yeah, in across all of the universes in the multiverse, there's this struggle, and Evelyn hugs Joy, and, you know, and says, Stop calling me Evelyn, call me Mom. And, you know, Joy tells her, you know, when I'm with you, it hurts both of us. And, you know, Evelyn basically says, I understand that, but let's try, you know, let's try to be better for each other. And the, let's see. Um, yeah, and, and the, I, I really, it was so sweet when, when Gong Gong accepted uh, Becky. And, you know, we have the, what did he say? Because <laughs> she doesn't speak. What was it? Uh, I think. Was it Mandarin? I'm gonna real quick try to find um, Cantonese. Evelyn and Gong Gong speak Cantonese, so, so yeah, you know. And and yeah, I mentioned earlier, you know, the jokes don't undercut 
I didn't feel like this undercut the the emotion of the the moment. And Joy hugs Evelyn back. And the the you know they're they're there for for taxes again. And you know the the yeah the ending note is you know you applied yourself and you did better. There's room for improvement. You know the the thing of just yeah. I really, really love this movie. Um, that brings us to the final section. Notes taken before watching. So, the... Um, uh, I think I'll just do this. And there we go. So, yeah. You know, just a few days ago, I... You know, I rewatched Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. You know, the the film about a couple of people that go to a place that does a thing. You know, I figured that would be good to put me in the headspace for for this movie. I, I didn't want to talk about this in the review since it's spoiler, but yeah, they're both both movies are an you know share an unusual method of exploration of characters. There's some absurdism, and I. I did say a lot of positive things about that movie in my video on it, and I stand by, like, holy crap, that movie holds up. It really is amazing. And, let's see... Yeah, so something that works really well in that is that it shows both objective reality and the world of memories intercutting them. I genuinely believe the film would not work anywhere near as well if you only had one of those two, regardless of which of the two kept. And, yeah, you know, in this movie, like... You know, basically the the yeah the the main reality, our Evelyn's reality, is the one that you know that that is the the majority of the movie, and then you know it'll jump to that they can jump to the the other ones, but yeah, and let's see, right? And I wanted to say you know I, not everybody who watched their movies have watched their shorts. The, the, um, yeah, if you're only going to watch one of the shorts by the Daniels, Possibilia is really excellent. And this movie is sort of a spiritual successor to that one. You know, both of them are like this thing of, well, what if you made this decision instead of this decision kind of thing. And, right, I have some IMDb trivia. Michelle Yeoh said the film was completely out of her comfort zone. I was suddenly doing comedy, physical comedy, action, horror, every single genre, pack, all packed into one, and jumping in and out of it. It was such a gratifying experience. I've waited a long time to receive a script like that, because as you get older, the box gets smaller and smaller. Very true. And, yeah, she did amazing here. And they, the Daniels originally intended for Evelyn to have undiagnosed ADHD. Shiner saying, it started as an almost insensitive idea. Like, what if the main character was so distractible they could tap into other universes? Subsequent, subsequently, as Quan researched the condition, he discovered that he himself had undiagnosed ADHD. Let's see. Uh, speaking to the development of his character, Wayman Huang, Huang who at once plays a passive role in the story as a loving husband who just wants to recapture the attention of his at-sea wife, Evelyn, and also is the catalyst for her across the multiverse journey towards self-discovery, Kehu Kwan said, One of the things that was really important to me was that the audience is able to distinguish these three versions, different versions, just based on how he stands, sits, walks, and moves. And you can, like, 100%, like, you can, you can immediately tell, oh, that's the other one. And... Daniel Kwan describes the release of the animated film Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which also deals with multiversal concept, as a little upsetting because we were like, oh shit, everyone's going to beat us to this thing we've been working on. He also stated watching the second season of Rick and Morty was really painful. I was like, they've already done all the ideas we thought were original. It was a really frustrating experience, so I stopped watching Rick and Morty while we were writing this project. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with Rick and Morty... Um, I do hear that that's, you know, they did a, a very similar thing. This They were working on this movie for a while before that. You know, it's just, 
it's a it's a very interesting idea to do. You know, you you have. Uh, I don't know if I want to spoil how much Rick, how similar Rick and Morty is to this, but there's a number of similarities, and those are just interesting ideas. You know, you can't. I I don't think that they should have to wait. You know, I I. I've only seen clips of Rick and Morty, but clearly that is extremely different from, from this. Kei Hui Kwan stopped acting for 20 years because of a lack of compelling Asian roles in Hollywood. In this film, he gets to play over 200 roles, some more substantive than others, that we see on screen, plus a theoretically infinite quantity of Waymans. In an interview with Screen Rant, editor Paul Rogers broke down why the movie was cut down by half an hour and shares how the original ending wrapped up almost every character's story, making the final trek up the stairs ridiculously long. I can imagine that, yeah. I think they did a really great job cutting, you know, yeah. I don't think anything in the movie should have been cut, and I don't really feel like, like, I get the, the you know, certainly the thing with the Jenny Slate character, you know, that it would have been great if there was just, tiny bit more with her, but, you know, they removed all that they could because it was found to be offensive, which, you know, they really weren't meaning to. He also reveals an entire universe that was scrapped from the film. The first cut was two hours and 45 minutes. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I would like to watch it. If they release it as just, you know, the everything, in, yeah, it's right there. The everything cut of everything everywhere all at once you know it, it's almost too yeah um, I would definitely watch it I'm not saying it would be a superior movie to this but I want to see everything they did but yeah the first cut was two hours and 45 minutes I think so we cut around half an hour of movie out of it some of the characters who pop up early in the film or the fight scenes popped up again at the end and they had their stories very cleanly and nicely wrapped up we realized that our ending was 45 minutes long just her trying to get up the stairs at the, yeah, I guess she does spend a very long time just getting up the stairs to keep Joy from getting into the bagel. I'm probably exaggerating, but it was very long. We realized that people didn't really need to see all the stories wrapped up. They didn't need to see Jenny Slate's character on a Zoom call with her baby at a birthday party. That does sound very sweet. It was all this stuff that was really cool and funny and great in the moment, but when you put it all together, the cup was overflowing. There were some deleted scenes. There was a universe called Spaghetti Baby Noodle Boy. That whole universe we just excised from the film, which does... Yeah, I, I read a little bit about... Yeah, that is legitimately... Yeah... Very funny and creative. Despite the draft for the film's script in uh, 2016, the movie's concept being developed as far back as 2010, quite a few viewers who saw the trailers and promotional material groaned at the fact that this was a multiverse movie due to the increasing amount of movies and TV shows being centered on, like Loki, Doctor Strange, the multi Multiverse of Madness, Spider-Man, Spider-Verse, The Flash, etc. Because of this, some assumed it was simply hopping on the multiverse trend, or verse hopping, verse jumping, as it were, and therefore refused to see it due to being sick of the trend. That really sucks. That's just... Of course, there's going to be a bunch about the multiverse. It's such, an, it's such an exciting idea, you know. And let's see. The film is often compared to Rick and Morty due to its heavy use of the metaverse, scatological humor, extreme violence, and existential angst. The Daniels even admitted that they felt really insecure about making this movie when they saw that Rick and Morty had already done a lot of their ideas. Clint Worthington of Consequence Road, for all its dataized absurdism and blink if you miss it pace, Daniels weaves the chaotic possibilities into the multiverse into a cohesive story about the aches and pains of the road not traveled and the need to carve out your own meaning in a meaningless universe. Describing Jobu Topaki's modus operandi, Worthington notes, the living contradiction that is the everything bagel. If you put everything on a bagel, what more is left? And if you've experienced everything that the multiverse can offer, what's the point of any of it? The film incorporates elements from a number of genres and film mediums, including black comedy, science fiction, fantasy, martial arts films, and animation. James Hong spends most of his screen time in a mechanized wheelchair, much like one of his other iconic roles, David Lopan in Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. 
in keeping with the film's theme of generation gaps and relationships between mothers and children, when the Hammer Museum at UCLA hosted directors Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheiner for a Q&A after a screening of Everything Everywhere All at Once, the moderator was not a film scholar or museum professional, but Scheiner's mother, Becky Holman Scheiner of Guntersville, Alabama. There are enough ideas in Everything Everywhere All at Once to... Uh, oh, right, yeah, this is where the... I forgot to note, but these are credit quotes. There are enough ideas and everything everywhere all at once to fuel a dozen movies or else a full-blown TV series. But the Daniels... Uh, yeah. The Daniels have put it in bombastic, emotionally draining 139 minutes. Bombastic, emotionally draining, yes. I don't see that as a bad thing. Unreal on my seat the whole time. Very comprehensive. I don't mean to water it down, but here we go. Kill Bill meets Being John Malkovich meets Inception with a ton of comedy infused. I mean, there is some truth to that. Here is an orgiastic work of slap-happy genius that doesn't operate like a narrative film so much as a particle accelerator, or maybe a cosmic washing machine, that two psychotic 12-year-olds designed in the hopes of reconciling the anxiety of what our lives could be with the beauty of what they are. Daniels explores the hopelessness of depression, the little miracles that truly makes life worthwhile, how acts of kindness can be an extraordinary asset, and most fitting to this film, how it's okay to be a mess. Which is very, like, so many people today feel miserable because they feel like, oh, I can't get anything to work in my life. And thankfully, we're finally seeing media that says that doesn't mean that you're wrong. Because for so many, like, I remember feeling like a mess as a kid, and when I watched, like, TV and movies, it was like, oh, the people who are messes, they're going to end up villains, or they, you know, they're just hopeless cases, and they're never going to be happy. You have to be perfect from the start, kind of thing, and just, and finally we're having media that says, no, it's, you know, lots of people are, you know, feel like they're a mess, it's okay. The film, which uses the gimmick of jumping between parallel universes to explore essentially how to be your best self, is awash in zany sci-fi cul-de-sacs, sly movie references, and a deranged high fructose attitude that scoffs at the idea of everything but the kitchen sink. The Daniels want infinite kitchen sinks. Let's see, and... Yeah. Yeah. Wow, wow, this was stunning. With such a title, the idea of it living up to the title seems to not even be on the table. The movie lives up to the title. It is everything. Comedy, I laughed out loud. Drama, I cried buckets. Action, the fight choreography. Horror, yes, horror. Philosophy, made me rethink life. And everything else. The movie is attempting everything and succeeding at it all. I'm thankful I got to see it. And, um... No, I'm not gonna... I, I don't wanna really get into the the negative uh let's see yeah here's another michelle yo stars as a chinese immigrant who owns a laundromat things suddenly become extremely weird when she and her hubby uh, quote ah uh, that's not his name k we kwan in a charming turn Go to the IRS, fe featuring Jamie Lee Curtis as a frumpy auditor. She ends up as various incarnations of herself in multiverses fighting to save the universe from destruction. Even though this description sounds like it may be a Marvel-based superhero adventure, it's not. It's a zany trip through several realities with confusing connections. These sci-fi sections are crazy fun. The frenzied martial arts moments propel the film. And uh, let's see... Okay, this person feels that the attempts at emotional family connections don't resonate. Yeah, I 100% disagree, but... This is the second feature from Daniels, the directing duo whose first film was Swiss Army Man, and except from that review applies to this film as well. Highly original, rollickingly weird premise that gets bogged down with too much message. Hm. See, I when, I when I copied that into my notes, I thought I would agree with it, but I really don't. But yeah, that's how some people felt like... And let's see. Um, uh, 
Um, yeah, uh, another review, one person says, This is not a postmodern film that proclaims nothing matters, as some fools on here are convinced. First of all, postmodernism is not the same thing as nihilism. Second of all, this is not a film about how nothing matters. This film is about how everything matters. Every choice, every relationship, every cream cheese bagel. Let's see... And... Is this a better multiverse movie than that mainstream curated Doctor Multi Doctor Strange multiverse thing that realized that released the same year and probably grossed more money at the box office? Because Normie's gonna Normie, obviously. And let's see. Um, I think. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Um. I heard good reviews about this, and usually when reviews are this good, it is bound to be overhyped, but I gave it a try anyhow, see if it lives up to the hype. Not gonna lie, it started off kind of messy, and I had a hard time following the story, switching between the English and Chinese language. The scenes in the first half of the movie appeared incoherent, and it was hard to understand what was going on. But then I discovered that this incoherence was consistent, like some mathematical constant, and came to the realization, maybe I should not approach this movie with logic, I should not try so hard to understand it, but rather let the movie take you in for the ride and get into it for the sensation of it all and see where it goes. I 100% agree. That is the, the yeah, and I, I think I'm very, I, I have a, um, I try to let movies just take me there, you know, I'll, I'll, yeah, you know, I, I used to be hypercritical, you know, and, and just, yeah, made me really miserable, so now I try to just let movies take me, and that is definitely something unique for this movie. Oh my, how it delivered. I wasn't expecting such an epic, emotional roller coaster experience. Even with all the crazy, over-the-top things happening on screen, it blended very well together. It literally included everything, everywhere, all at once, that you ever wanted in a movie. This was a masterpiece of a movie. Instant, timeless, classic to topics touched upon that are very relevant for our times. Yes. This also shows that the representation matters. It gives us a whole range of new and interesting perspectives and content we never knew we wanted. My compliments for the scriptwriters and producers for giving us this gem of a movie. And it certainly lived up to the hype and more. Now, let's see. Yeah, so this person did not like it. He gave it a 2 out of 10. And, yeah, he felt that the... Yeah, I don't even want to say... Anyway, something I do really respect is he did say... He did start his review with a technical achievement for sure. I, I really feel like no matter how much you... Like, no matter how much you might hate this movie, and evidently a bunch of people do, you gotta admit, you know, a technical achievement for sure. I, I I think it's important to to acknowledge because there are some movies, like the the I think I'll just put this here. There we go. Um, yeah, I I feel like no matter how much you hate stuff about this movie, like it's clearly a, a you know an achievement technically. Now, let's see... Uh, right, yeah. Be kind, especially when you don't know what's going on. If only we could recognize that those who combat us in life do so out of hidden pain and fight them with kindness. If only we could accept our kids for who they are and say supportive things from the heart instead of trying to mold them. If only we could be content with the life we have and set aside the idea of the countless other lives we might have led had we made different decisions along the way. If only we could see that the flip side to life being meaningless and everything ultimately being sucked into the abyss is the freedom that comes from that, that we can do anything with the time we've got. 100%. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, hit me up in the comments, let me know what is your favorite multiverse movie? You know, what is your favorite movie that like this? You know, it doesn't have to be multiverse. It can be Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Just any movie that explores characters through something unusual, you know. 
If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, they suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, and one talking about my spoiler filled thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus Star Wars show, which these days is The Mandalorian. And recently, the reviewing thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my own next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.